Our scripture today comes from Galatians 1, 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. To, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Got to say a word of uh, welcome to a dear friend uh, that's visiting from Rapid City. And uh, Nancy Micklich was on my staff at Canyon Lake in Rapid City as a parish nurse. And so, hi Nancy, I had to, had to say hello. So we're glad to have you here. And I think there's a couple here that work with, or been with nomads that's visiting today. There they are. Good to have you with us. We've got some other folks right down here who are nomaders too. So afterwards, my whole purpose in doing that was to get the nomad folks together. So. And somehow that nomad stands for Northern Methodists going down for, didn't like deep snow, so they go somewhere else, but then they come up here. Anyway, it's a lot of good fun stuff with that group. So, um, We are starting a sermon series today looking at the book of Galatians. And so we hope that through your own personal study in the weeks, the next six weeks, uh, that you'd study a chapter a week. We're in chapter one. Uh, today and so we hope that you will walk along with us if you're not able to be with us each week uh, at least you know what we're looking at and uh, we're focusing on the freedom that God gives us uh, through Jesus Christ and the grace that is offered to us because Paul argues that vehemently in this particular material and word to the church at Galatia that we also overhear so let us pray together Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the Apostle Paul and his faithfulness and ministry to you. And we pray that as we ponder and think about the gifts of your word and your guidance for our lives, that you would bless us today with your spirit. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Billy Graham loves to tell a story about himself. Uh, he was just getting more and more known uh, for doing a lot of crusades and people were recognizing him and on one particular occasion he was driving a little fa fast through town uh, in a southern town and uh, so he got picked up for going about 10 miles over the speed limit and uh, the policeman said now I'm giving you a ticket but you also have to come and before you leave and come before the judge and pay your fine and so he went into town went to the courthouse and the judge was there and and he asked uh, Billy Graham if he was, you know, guilty, and he said, yes, I am. And then the judge looked up again and saw that it was, he was like recognizing it was Billy Graham. And uh, so the judge said, well, since you have pleaded guilty, the fine is $10, a dollar for every mile over the speed limit you went. And also, I'm going to help you out because, and he takes out his wallet and he pulls out a $10 bill and says, and I'm paying the fine for you, uh, Reverend Graham, uh, Billy Graham. And so he pays the fine, attaches it to him, and he said, and we're so glad to have you here. We're gonna, I'm going to take you out for a steak dinner on me. And so later on when Billy Graham tells that story, he says, that's what God's love is like. 
That's what God's love is like. The Apostle Paul uh, is one who led the church in great ways. In fact, he was the first church planter. He planted churches in a variety of areas, and, and now we are looking at, in this particular six weeks, the book, the letter that he wrote to the church at Galatia. Now, Galatia today, if you were to look at a present-day map, it's, it's Turkey. Uh, many of the people that he was ministering among and, 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 and inviting to come and follow and become Christians in that area originally came from and immigrated to that area, Asia Minor. It became a Roman province, but they came from the Belgium, France, Switzerland area. Those people came about 270 years before the time of Christ. And so this group of people would most likely be called pagan at that time. And when, G when Paul came in his first missionary trip that we see in Acts chapters 13 and 14, uh, he began to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and people began to respond. And so he would normally stay in a lot of these places where he's planning a church, oh, for a couple of years and begin to know the folks and set up leadership. And then, of course, as we know, he would move on to the next place. And so uh, Paul would leave people there but he would go on. But he would always hear and get reports about what's going on in the church in those areas. And this particular letter begins by his very being disturbed of what he's heard is going on in Galatia. Now what he begins with, normally Paul, when he writes these letters, if you read the other letters to the other churches, he does kind of a flowery thing about, you know, how everybody, you know, his, well, he's glad to, to be writing to them and how he misses them and and he does a little bit of this, but not very much. And then normally he writes a pretty good long prayer uh, to, in that letter. But in this one, it's a little shorter prayer because Paul isn't real happy. In fact, he's, he's pretty upset. And so he moves right into the issue. And the issue is, is that the Galatian folks, the people of Galatia, are starting to fall away from the way that he had taught them about Christ. And what is going on is there are some Jewish Christians who have come into the area and are telling many of the people from this church at Galatia that they have to become Jews first and then become Christians. Well, you know, Paul's preaching and Paul's experience is all about that that's not what you have to do. You just experience the power of God's love in and through Jesus Christ, that you cannot earn it through the law. And in fact, here again, he hears that these Jewish Christians have come and told those who he has brought into the faith about following and following in the footsteps of the Jewish tradition. And he has preached over and over again that they don't need to do that, but he is disappointed that they are doing it. But you know, in some ways, we are that way too, aren't we? We have a sense that we cannot believe that we can just, just experience God's love for ourselves, that it's freely given. We don't have to earn it. Because in so many things in life, we think, well, you know, for something, you've got to do something to receive something. But in this case, we receive the gracious gift of God's love in Jesus Christ through the death and resurrection of Christ. And because we receive that, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to earn it. We just receive it and surrender to it. She had started coming to our church. And after a while, she had made an appointment to come visit with me to kind of talk about church life and what that means. And she began to share about her own life and how she had made some poor choices. And in fact, get to the point where she said, uh, you know, I just can't be forgiven. I don't know how God would forgive me. And I tried to reassure her, you know, God's love is for everyone. It's God's forgiveness and grace through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You just receive it. And she said, it, it just can't be. That just sounds too easy. I should have to do something, some kind of penance or something. We get into that feeling sometimes. We think that we have to do some good things to earn God's love. But Paul reminds the, Galatia, the people at Galatia and, the, and us today that there's nothing we can do to earn God's love, only to respond to the gift of God's love in our hearts and lives. To respond in the ways that God would be pleasing to God. Because as God has poured out the gift of Jesus Christ into our lives, we receive it, and then we respond. 
by giving the very best of ourselves to others. And that's what Paul is trying to say in this passage. He gets right to it. He says, you have gone off to another gospel. Not what I've taught you. Please do not do that. Don't have to go through the rituals of the law. The law is gone. And especially Paul gets upset is because his authority has been challenged. His own personal experience of Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus is what moved him to say and to preach the gospel that he is preaching. That God's love is given to all. We just surrender to it and experience the power of it. Many churches have done these what we call random acts of kindness. There'll be churches that have been on bike paths and handed out, you know, water. water. Um, there have been uh, churches that have bought down gas prices to just freely say. And I remember seeing one person going when they pulled in and found out a church was paying down some of their gas. Well, why are you doing this? Well, because God loves you. And that, there's that kind of shocked look. What do you mean God loves me? You know, I mean, people, we just have trouble accepting that God's love is just freely given to us. And we don't have to do anything to earn it. In fact, there's a foundation called the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation. And you can go to their website and it talks about different stories of people doing random acts of kindness. And the winner of their kind of competition for 2013 is a, a young lady by the name of Hannah. And Hannah, after college, wanted to go to the big city of New York. And she went because she wanted to be a writer. And so she began to try to find employment and was really struggling. And she was away from her home and she was getting lonely and depressed. And so one day she caught herself standing at the getting ready to get on the subway when she said, I saw somebody who looked sadder and lonelier than me, which I couldn't believe. And so she went and she sat next to this young lady. And as they were visiting a little bit, she decided at that moment, as a writer, I'm going to write her a love letter. And so she just took out a piece of paper and started writing a love letter and handed it to this lady that was next to her. She read it. And she was moved to tears. Because she received that love letter, she then went home and read it over and over again. Well, this gave Hannah a great idea. She said, I could create a website where people could come and if they're feeling lonely or depressed, I would write them a love letter. You know, not an email, not a text. She would write them a handwritten note, a, le a letter. In fact, she called her website the whole world needs a love letter. The whole world needs a love letter. My friends, Paul is reminding the church at Galatia and reminds us that we have received a love letter from God in the form of Jesus Christ who gave of himself, emptied himself so that we may have life. And because we have that life, we don't have to do anything to earn that. But receiving the power of that love and surrendering to it, we respond by pleasing God. In fact, Paul says, who am I pleasing, human beings or am I pleasing God? Through his proclamation of the gospel, his understanding that we don't earn and have to work hard for God's love. God already loves us. Our call is to respond and be love letters to others. Today, as we come forward to receive Holy Communion, this is God's love letter to each of us. The power of this sacrament resonates in our hearts and lives. The power of God's grace and mercy that dwells within us and forgives us. So that when we rise from the table, we can go forth. And maybe each one of us will do that random act of kindness. Or that sense of pleasing God by writing a love letter to someone in need. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of the gospel, the power that reminds us that there is nothing we can do to earn your love, but it has already been freely given. And as we receive and surrender to that, may we respond as your people in love and in kindness and encouragement to a hurting world. Help us to write those letters of love. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.